In Yellowstone National Park, geologists say one of the park's famous geyser basins now has a new hot spring. Far below the forests and steaming valleys of the American West lies a story that is still being written in silence and fire. For centuries, Yellowstone National Park has been seen as a place of wonder, a crown of geysers, waterfalls, and wildlife. Yet, under this beauty rests a vast engine, a magmatic system of staggering scale, one that challenges both imagination and science. Recent discoveries have forced geologists to look again at this hidden colossus, not as a static chamber beneath a national park, but as a shifting, evolving force that may have shaped and may continue to shape landscapes across extraordinary distances. The discovery did not come in a sudden explosion, but rather through decades of quiet work. Seismographs listening to faint tremors, satellites measuring ground uplift by millimeters, and electromagnetic surveys mapping the unseen. By 2025, the picture that emerged was both sobering and exhilarating. Deep beneath Yellowstone, far below the familiar geysers and caldera floor, researchers identified a magmatic body so immense that its molten and partially molten rock could fill the Grand Canyon more than 11 times. That revelation, published in a leading scientific journal, was not merely an incremental update. It redrew the mental maps of volcanologists and forced them to confront a question they had long placed at the edges of speculation. How connected are America's most dramatic geological landmarks? The Grand Canyon, carved by a river that has etched stone for millions of years, has always been admired as the masterpiece of erosion. Yellowstone, on the other hand, has been feared and studied as the mouth of a supervolcano, one capable of global consequences. They sit hundreds of miles apart, Yet, the metaphorical bridge between them may not be entirely fanciful. If the forces beneath Yellowstone have the capacity to stretch outward, if magma and heat can migrate along weakened corridors in the crust, then the link between seemingly separate wonders may not be as distant as it appears. The scale of this hidden reservoir is almost incomprehensible. Imagine more than a thousand cubic miles of semi-molten rock, a domain where stone behaves with the fluidity of water. It is not a lake, but an empire of heat, a colossal storehouse of energy sealed beneath layers of earth. Some of this material is crystal mush, partly solidified, not easily mobilized into an eruption. Yet its presence changes how the surface behaves. Heat seeps upward, powering geysers, staining rocks in vibrant yellows and reds, and weakening layers of volcanic ash so that rivers carve gorges faster than they should. The Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone is one such scar. Nearly 300 meters deep and more than 30 kilometers long, its walls painted with ochres and iron reds, its origin still debated. Was it purely the work of water or did hidden fire beneath make the stone soft enough to yield so quickly? The enigma becomes sharper, with new evidence showing that Yellowstone's magma reservoir is not simply sitting still. Instead of being confined beneath the caldera's familiar circle of hot springs, the deeper heat appears to be creeping northeast. Measurements of ground deformation, subtle tilts in the land, and even variations in satellite gravimetry suggest that the heart of Yellowstone's fiery system may be slowly shifting its position. That discovery unsettled long-standing models that assumed the volcanic center was fixed. For scientists, it raised the haunting question. If magma can move on such scales, what landscapes beyond Yellowstone might eventually feel its influence? Yet it would be a mistake to see this as a prelude to doom. The paradox of Yellowstone is that size does not equal imminent catastrophe. The vastness of the magmatic reservoir actually reduces the likelihood of sudden eruption. Much of the rock is not fully molten but partially crystallized, reluctant to mobilize into a violent blast. Current monitoring shows no swarms of earthquakes beyond historical norms, no extreme bulging of the ground, no indicators that magma is surging upward toward the surface. The geysers erupt, the springs boil, the ground breathes in tiny pulses, but the overall message from the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory remains steady. The supervolcano sleeps. Still, the human mind cannot easily ignore the scale of what lies beneath. The mere knowledge of an underground reservoir that could refill the Grand Canyon more than 11 times awakens awe and unease in equal measure. For residents of the American West, Yellowstone is both sanctuary and shadow, a place where bison graze above chambers of molten rock and where tourists peer into waterfalls 
that plunge through walls, weakened by unseen heat. Every plume of steam rising into the air becomes not just a spectacle, but a reminder of the fire that feeds it. Scientists continue to walk a line between reassurance and caution. They know the odds of a catastrophic eruption in any human lifetime are low, perhaps less than one in many tens of thousands of years. Yet they also know the geological record is full of surprises. Yellowstone erupted violently around 640,000 years ago, again around 1.3 million years ago, and still earlier at 2.1 million years ago. Those intervals suggest immense spans of quiet punctuated by fury, whether the next chapter will unfold in another eruption or in a slow reshaping of rivers and canyons, no one can yet say. What is becoming clear is that Yellowstone's story is not confined to the park's borders. Tectonic highways, weaknesses in the crust, old faults, zones of hydrothermal alteration stretch outward in subtle but measurable ways. Heat and fluids migrate along them, sometimes influencing erosion, sometimes accelerating the collapse of weakened rocks. When rivers exploit these softened zones, the result can be landscapes of rare beauty. Canyons painted in golds and reds, waterfalls cascading through sculpted stone. The Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone may be more than a triumph of water. It may be the signature of fire working in secret partnership with a river. As the 21st century advances, researchers find themselves not merely cataloging Yellowstone's features, but rethinking how Earth systems interweave across scales. Is the canyon just a masterpiece of erosion? Or is it part of a larger choreography of heat and water that extends deep into the crust? Does the shifting magma beneath Yellowstone have lessons for how other supervolcanoes evolve? And perhaps most hauntingly, if magma can drift northeast, does that suggest a future where Yellowstone's influence spreads into unfamiliar ground? The answers are not yet complete. What is certain is that the American West, with its vast plains, mountain chains, and iconic canyons, is more than a backdrop to human history. It is itself a living story, a manuscript written in fire and water, turning its pages slowly in the language of geology. Each tremor is another sentence in that story. And as scientists peer deeper into the magma archive hidden below Yellowstone, humanity is offered not only knowledge, but perspective, an invitation to see the land not just as scenery, but as a restless being, ancient, powerful, and always in motion. The Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone is a place where science and wonder meet. Visitors often stand speechless before its vast chasm, where golden walls plunge 300 meters down and the roar of the lower falls shakes the air. Many assume its birth was no different from the canyons of great rivers, cut relented rivers, cut relentlessly by water and ice. Yet this gorge defies simple explanations. Unlike the Colorado River Canyon, which is clearly the work of patient erosion over millions of years, the Yellowstone Gorge shows scars of something more volatile. Its walls are not only carved but also transformed, altered by centuries of superheated water and gases rising from below. Look closely and the colors tell the story. Reds and ochres mark the oxidation of iron. Whites and yellows trace the path of sulfur. Minerals crystallized in steaming vents stain the rock as if the earth itself painted the cliffs with fire. In some layers, clay minerals exist that could only have formed after prolonged exposure to boiling hydrothermal fluids. The canyon is not just cut, it is cooked. That realization has led many geologists to argue that the gorge is a partnership between water and heat, between river and magma, a dual authorship of fire and flow. The river's role is undeniable. For thousands of years, the Yellowstone River has surged through weak volcanic rocks, carrying away debris, carving and widening the channel. But why was the stone here so unusually soft and ready to yield? The answer lies beneath. Hydrothermal systems connected to the hidden magma body percolated upward, weakening rock until the river could slash through with extraordinary speed. Landslides followed, collapsing sections of canyon walls already fragile from their fiery treatment. This combination of processes explains not only the gorge's depth and length, but also the startling colors that leave visitors breathless. Understanding such features requires technology that peers beneath the ground as easily as a doctor examines a patient. In the past decade, new seismic imaging allowed researchers to see how sound waves slow or bend as they pass through regions partly filled with molten rock. Electromagnetic surveys added another dimension, detecting differences in conductivity caused by heat and fluids. 
these tools revealed the full extent of Yellowstone's deeper reservoir, one vast enough to rewrite expectations. The shock was not just its size, but its apparent drift. Instead of remaining neatly beneath the caldera, much of the heat source seemed to be extending toward the northeast. This discovery unsettled established thinking. For decades, scientists taught that Yellowstone's caldera marked the core of the system. The hot springs, geysers, and hydrothermal fields were assumed to be sitting above the main chamber of magma. But satellite gravimetry, borehole tilt meters, and GPS stations told a different story. The ground northeast of the caldera was swelling gently, in ways too persistent to be dismissed. Mass deficits measured from orbit suggested the presence of lighter, hotter rock spreading in that direction. The magma heart, it seemed, was on the move. The implications of such movement stretch beyond Yellowstone. If magma can migrate through the crust along structural weaknesses, then other surface features may be shaped by its unseen hand. Some geologists now suspect that old fault lines and altered zones in the crust act as silent highways, not for rivers or glaciers, but for energy itself. Heat, fluids, and sometimes partially molten rock travel along these weaknesses, reshaping landscapes far from the obvious caldera. The Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone, with its accelerated erosion and hydrothermally altered walls, may be sitting precisely atop one of these hidden corridors. Such connections, while provocative, are not claims of imminent disaster. Instead, they highlight how Earth systems interact in ways far more intricate than once believed. Volcanoes, canyons, and hot springs may not be isolated phenomena, but chapters in the same book. The northeastward drift of Yellowstone's magma is meadows, lies a shifting architecture of faults and fractures, through which energy seeps and whispers of change echo over centuries. For the scientists of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, this complexity demands constant vigilance. Their network of seismometers listens for earthquake swarms, GPS receivers track the faint rise and fall of land, and gas analyzers sniff the air for shifts in chemistry that might suggest magma is on the move. As of mid-2025, the verdict is steady. No unusual quake swarms, no dramatic bulges, no signs that magma is forcing its way toward daylight. The geysers erupt with variability, but within expected ranges, their rhythms reminding visitors of the heartbeat beneath. And yet paradox persists. The more enormous the magma reservoir is shown to be, the more people worry about apocalypse. The irony is that size often means stability. A deep, partially crystallized body is less prone to sudden eruption than a smaller, fresher chamber brimming with liquid magma. What Yellowstone's great reservoir does most reliably is feed heat upward, sustaining the world's most extraordinary collection of geysers and hydrothermal features. It is fire expressed not in explosions, but in steam and color, a quiet but constant testament to the energy stored below. Still, scientists resist the temptation to grow complacent. Earth's history has repeatedly shown that quiet intervals can be deceptive. 70,000 years ago, the land here was torn open by fiery violence. 640,000 years ago, an eruption blanketed much of the continent in ash. Such timescales are beyond ordinary human experience, but they remain written in the layers of rock, reminders that Yellowstone's slumber may not be eternal. No one can say when or how the next act will unfold. It may be a small hydrothermal explosion, a collapse along the canyon, or perhaps one day a much larger event. For now, however, the signs point toward calm. To walk the rim of the Yellowstone Canyon today is to stand at the intersection of these truths. The land is both fragile and resilient, shaped by forces older and more patient than any civilization. Water cascades into depths painted by fire, and tourists watch in awe, unaware that the cliffs beneath them were sculpted not only by rivers, but also by heat rising from a supervolcano that still breathes. Each visitor, whether they know it or not, becomes a witness to an ongoing dialogue between magma and river, between Earth's deepest heart and its most visible scars. Beneath the calm scenery of Yellowstone, scientists see not a single chamber of magma, but an intricate system, a network of molten and partially molten zones layered like archives of Earth's history. Each layer records a different chapter in the planet's story. Eruptions that once reshaped continents, hydrothermal activity that altered rocks into fragile clays, rivers that sliced into the weakened stone, 
and collapses that widened the gorge. The Grand. Canyon of the Yellowstone is both a monument and a manuscript. Every stratum a line of text, written by fire and water. The canyon's geology preserves unmistakable evidence of subterranean influence. In some exposures, volcanic fragments and hydrothermally altered clays point to a past shaped not just by surface weathering, but by heat surging from below. Certain mineral assemblages can only form under sustained warmth, conditions impossible without the magmatic reservoir beneath. These clues suggest that Yellowstone's fiery heart has quietly influenced the very pace at which the river sculpted its gorge. Priming the land for erosion in ways invisible to the casual observer. Where granite or sandstone would resist for millennia, these softened volcanic rocks yielded swiftly, their colors transformed by superheated chemistry into the hues that draw visitors today. To scientists, the canyon is less a static wonder and more a window into processes that continue. Hydrothermal activity still alters stone along its walls. Landslides remain a risk where heated water and weak rocks intersect. Even the pace of erosion may be guided by pulses of underground heat. The gorge is not finished. It is alive in geological terms. Shaped by forces that will keep working long after current generations have left. This interplay of water, fire, and time speaks to a larger question. What role do hidden magmatic giants play in the making of landmarks? The sheer volume beneath Yellowstone, enough to fill the Grand Canyon more than 11 times, challenges ordinary comprehension. If such reservoirs remain largely stable, their greatest expression may not be cataclysm, but persistence. Centuries of heat-altering rocks, sustaining geysers, and quietly influencing landscapes far beyond the caldera. When energy does find release, it often emerges in subtle ways, through hydrothermal explosions that hurl steam and rock skyward, through the sudden awakening of a dormant geyser, or through slow ground uplift that reshapes valleys by mere centimeters each year. Still, the vastness of Yellowstone's reservoir carries a weight of possibility. Should conditions shift over distant timescales, its eruption could transform the continent. Layers of ash preserved in soil horizons across North America testify to such events long ago. The paradox is that while the system is quiet now, the memory of past fury is never fully erased. The presence of so much molten rock is both a gift and a warning. It sustains the world's most spectacular hydrothermal wonders, but it also reminds us that the Earth holds powers far greater than our civilizations. Modern technology ensures these powers. GPS receivers detect land deformation smaller than a human fingernail. Satellites track mass changes deep within the crust. Gas sensors analyze the breadth of the Earth, escaping through hot springs. Together, these instruments form a chorus of vigilance, a constant dialogue between scientists and the land they study. Share it with others who love to learn and subscribe for more deep dives into the mysteries of our planet. The Earth has countless stories left to tell. Let's keep listening together.